Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Bebop here. We're going to be going over the Forge Dungeon here in Great Cleave today. So, we're going to take the fast travel and we are going to walk up to the door, start a lobby. But before we do that, we're going to pick up this side mission. That way, when we go inside, we're going to pick up the three things that it's telling us to pick up and we will get extra xp you'll get 5000 xp by this point you're probably going to be level 65 anyway so i don't think the xp and all that really even matters this was more for the old ranking up or leveling up system when you would get up here and get ready to run this when you weren't all the way to 65 now leveling up is a lot easier so you should be 65 by the time you get here so you can choose to mess with that mission and get a just an orb that does absolutely nothing maybe in the update that will change but if you want to come down here to unlock it on your map you have the old forge to the right there that little um fire pit right there where you used to be able to make 625 you know human bane human you know ward gear using flame cores no one uses that anymore now this dungeon has the best music in any dungeon by far. It's not even close. Don't even argue with me. Let's just move on from there, all right? <laughs> I turned it on about a quarter of the way through. I usually don't have any music on because of copyright issues, but this dungeon's worth it. I don't care if the video gets uh, the copyright on it because, man, the music's so good. Now, as you can see here, hopefully this is fixed by the time the October 15th update comes out. But when you go into Forge, there will be several teammates that get stuck in the chair or I mean in the stairs right there. What you can do is crouch, get to the very edge and use an ability to get out. But I could not do that because of skill issue. So let's go ahead and unstuck. Now, once you unstuck, you'll be on top of the stairs and let's get through the dungeon. That's the first boss in this dungeon. All right, the stairs. So you want to take your human ward pot your human coating, your honing stone, your food to get your attributes up. Now it is the regular dungeon, so not that big of an issue. You'll be able to go through this just fine, but I go ahead and throw it on so we can get through it a little bit quicker and make the video shorter. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So what you're going to do is make this first big pull and you're going to pull all the way down to where I pull, or you can go down to where the stairs are to line of sight, the archers. It depends on you. If you're the tank, make sure you tell the DPS to break off at some point and get the archers because the healer will be getting hit. And if you're going to be a tank, like I say in all the videos, you need to be active on the mic. Let the DPS know and the healer know what's going on. I'm going to pull to here. Uh, I need you to break off and get the archer here, usually Spearman or, you know, somebody like that. Evade Rapier could do it very well, too. And these enemies are lost enemies. These are the ghosts. Now, there are some lost parts in, well, really like two lost parts in here. You could have a lost ward pot when you get into M3s, but mm, don't really need it. It's such a small spot. Right here, you have two enemies with shields that really hit pretty hard and they will stun you. So watch out when they go full grit and they rear down with their shield in front of them and they're going to hit you with their flail. The mage will throw ice damage out, as you saw there. Now in mutations, the ice damage does a lot of damage, so you got to make sure you're staying in the sacred. Those shield guys, a lot of times tanks, you want to be on your hammer to try to stun them as much as possible. It's not going to be perfect because when they grit, hey there's no stopping that hit it's coming so just try to watch out best you can do is just hope everybody's on point with their cc and you just get through it now in regular you'll get through it just fine now a lot of tanks like to pull over here to the left first because a lot of times the big guy is over here on the left it depends if you open that door and you see he's on the right side i like pulling to the right first and then coming over here but that's just me you can choose either way you want to do it. But if you do it this way, which is majority of the time, this is what people will do. The next group you come over here to, you can go ahead and pull these group of three enemies that are up there. There'll be an archer and two other guys. You can pull those down here, line of sight them around that corner that I just pinged at. So I was telling the healer, hey, you go ahead and line of sight those enemies and pull them down here. One came. The other ones are a little bit slower being that they're archers. Now, usually we'd have a reap here and try to get them together. But I try to do the best I can with the greatsword. And I am greatsword tanking in this. So if you're not a big fan of sword and shield for tanking, you can greatsword tank just fine. Now, you will lose some protection. But what you get in return is mobility and a lot of taunts. So it's more fun to me to tank with the greatsword. 
anyways let's get to it i uh told them to go ahead and let's just take this archer out real quick because they do lag behind and they'll start hitting the healer a lot once you clear those two mobs and you just walk up here you're going to bring all these to the very back there's a healer to the back right you see so that guy will be trying to heal all the humans and it looks like we had some lag issue there but please forgive me and you want to stay on your hammer here you want to try to CC as much as possible because if all these enemies are, you know, hitting different directions or whatnot, your DPS can get killed really quick. If you could try to separate the group from the healer and have the DPS attack the healer first, hey, that'll make your job a lot easier. Also, when you come up here, if you do the big pool where you pull all those mobs instead of parting them um, in groups like what we did earlier, if you pull all those mobs up here, then tank you need to rotate back to basically where i'm standing because the other mobs are going to be late and you want to be able to re-aggro those and get them off of the healer i stress that a lot because the healer is constantly under fire from having heals they're just going to get a lot of aggro and it's so important to take care of your healers and you know if the healer goes down you're like well, why does the healer keep going down because <laughs> you don't know how much aggro they're getting and until you heal, you don't understand the situation. Now, that rupture was really laggy for me yesterday. Now, I do have about 180 ping on this server out here because I'm in Texas and this is an EU server is what it is. Now, I would say in a regular, go ahead and pull in here. I kind of wanted to show you that there's three mages and ice. You normally in a mutation, you're always going to pull this big guy out. The DPS will take care of the mages while the tank holds the big guy. Now, the sacred from the healer will be on the mages with the DPS. A beacon will be with the tank. Okay, that's very important to note. Right here, you want to go ahead and aggro these guys. Have the healer pull the next group. Go down the stairs so they come up to you because she's line of sighting them. And you can kill them that way. Now, there will be an archer up top that stays, so we'll go to him. There is another way you could do it if you pull all the way up, <clears throat> excuse me, to the right here. You could go around the wall. To me, it's just not that, it's just not worth it. It just takes too long. They don't really line a sight very good right there. So the way I showed you is the best way to do it. There's a platinum vein up here. You talk to that guy, you step on the button, and that's going to allow us to go to the dials. Now, I want to get back to the swordsmen and the mages. Those mages throw ice damage in mutations. That hurts, and it hurts fast. So... Like I said, Sacred will be on the DPS, and they will try to group them up as best they can with the Great Axe or two. And the tank, you will be holding the big guy. Now, these dials, there's two of them, okay? These are a little bit tricky, so pay attention. They start on square. Write this down. Square is zero, okay? Basically, it's how many turns it takes to get to a symbol. So the D symbol that you see there, a lot of people will say D. They'll say D square D. It's three zero three okay square is zero circle is one x is two and d is three so you now you know you're probably like well that doesn't make sense it does make sense if you just kind of go back and listen to it and then i type it in the chat d square d in case it's people that don't know the number system it's d square d okay that's easiest for them to know and then it's three zero three Learn the number system because it's universal and it's just easier. Because there's a lot of times people are like, well, I thought D was triangle. We do we use a different. If everybody goes by the number system, it's so much easier. Now, we are going to turn the dungeon music up here. And you will start hearing more of the dungeon sounds. The music will come in later through different zones. And you will see how good it sounds. Now, this is where it begins the loss part. That is fire damage, so be careful. Try to get through it. The explosion will knock you off. There was a gather wall back there to the left, so pay attention to that. Always bring up the ghost to here in line of sight. This is the best spot to get him to fully come up. This ghost is a little tricky, and it likes to play games of staying back, so this is the best spot. If you go right around the entrance to the left that we came in, it's not as good as coming up here because he will dance back and forth on the bridge okay and it's going to mess some people up and dps will start hitting them so you want to make sure you tell dps do not hit anything and tell the healer do not heal until i get to my spot the second round of ghosts will appear here one is shattering right underneath that name you see it says shattered so when he is about to die he will back up shake a lot and explode on you if you don't kill him fast enough right here is a good spot for 
everybody except for the healer the healer can heal down the stairs here and doesn't even have to go up and around but everybody should have a sword with leaping strike ability if you really want to get through this the best way and learn it for mutations later the spot that i'm at right now is where the healer would stand to throw heals they'll just have to back up a little bit when you're crossing this watch out for the ghost they will aggro and throw stuff at you i don't know why they're not doing it in a regular but they will throw stuff at you and try to knock you off into the lava and they will be throwing fire at you over here so a ring of fire to burn you now there's an or calcum vein right up here that you can go up i had a little bit of trouble so let's do some editing magic first time up no problems now we're gonna make sure you jump over this little hole in the ground the orc hawk is straight ahead so make sure you grab that and then you can head back the same way you came once you do that you can either go down below where the pumps are or wait for that one to go so you can jump up then we're gonna head across and i'm gonna show you the shortcut here this is why you want the leaping strike on the sword then instead of going around to the left and going up and then back down that takes longer just jump across here and now we can get to fighting that way you can shorten the time of the dungeon and we can just get rolling the dps can do the same thing healer should be down where we entered the whole arena at that way the healer could throw hills and you just simply take these out now if you look below the name you see shattering so make sure hey everybody is shattering so whenever this one's about to die right there in that phase if you don't kill him fast enough he will blow up on everybody there's a orc calcum vein down to my right here is the quest mission that we picked up outside to get the extra xp and gypsum orb and a little bit of gold and your first or your second supp supply box right there so your last lost enemy is straight ahead and then we're going to be at the first boss fight now make sure that you have your human coatings on or whatnot at this boss because it is technically labeled as human it's a snake boss so there are no backstabs so having more critical chance on either either on your weapon with keen or on your reen with keen awareness or being more 350 decks that type of thing will help you get more criticals on this boss so tank pick a side i usually pick the left side here everybody else can go to the right you will see fire coming out of the wall to the left where i'm at now this is a boss that does a lot of sh uh, slash damage so make sure if you want you can have a slash amulet on if you have it by that time but most likely you won't not a big deal you'll be through it just fine you will see a orange orb that floats above your head which means a ball of lava is going to drop on you so you want to make sure you kind of move out of where you're going to be standing so it drops away from the boss and fire protection is really good to have in your clothing on this boss so if you want to slot some fire gems do that this is the first round uh, roundabout where you basically just run in a circle you can do damage as you're running in a circle to the boss just like that but you want to avoid those flames they will kill you and they will kill you fast even my level or whatnot those things will kill me pretty quick so not to be played with and then there will be a second phase where the boss that's why i'm not swinging a lot right here we're trying to show you the second phase the boss will do four lines instead of two and so you want to make sure you move quickly with those go inside where the boss is and don't be hanging around the edges because the lines will move faster than you can run so the closer you are to the boss the easier it is to follow the path that you need to to stay safe as you see here here come the four lines don't forget the waves you can dodge through the waves if you want to now these fire lines you can also dodge through if you wanted to but best just hang out and go around in the little v section where you're safe and then you can mow the boss down watch out for this because it's a strike attack my calamity will block that just fine and then we go up here there's a chest and an orb the orb's going to open up the door so we can go to the next part and the chest will give you a lot of mediocre gatherables so enjoy that all right so after we get the orb and the chest now you're going to head down here to where the shrine is and you'll go through a couple more pumps here on out will be human enemies now make sure you pull these mobs together closely and tightly these there will be a lot of shield enemies from here on out so they will stun and hit pretty hard so the better the grouping 
the better you can kill them and the quicker you can kill them and get through to the next part now usually the archers walking up here you'd have to bring them down they were all nicely grouped up right here so i got lucky i want to make sure i aggro and don't go too far to the left to pull those mobs there is a mage up top that does ice damage so if you accidentally pull all that it's going to be trouble for you after you mow these mobs down there is the second part of the quest that we picked up right outside the door of the dungeon and there we go a little cluster now pull these mobs up top tell dps don't hit those until they come up and when the mage throws the ice down make sure you're staying in the sacred circle now will it matter that much in a regular maybe not but you need to know that for mutations because that ice like i said hits very hard and a lot of times you'll be spec for a different type of mutation other than ice so it would hit you very hard Right here, I always like to let the tank finish this out. And the mobs come through pretty quickly. You're going to skip the whole next group. And you're going to pull them up to the, where the pumps are. Now, if the pumps kill these guys, it does still count as a mob kill. So that's cool. If you're going for mob count and mutations later on down the road, I always say just skip all these. There's no point of killing these. Just run through or try to run through. <laughs> This next group of mobs, you want to try to get together as close as possible. Pull them to the mage. Just like that. There is a big ore calcum vein that you see over there where you can jump across the rocks and grab it. Make sure you pick up your loot. And we're going to head up top. This mob, you want to go ahead and pull him up to the other three. It's so one thing I like about the great sword right there. I can quickly taunt. Bring these guys up. There is a shrine immediately to my left right there. Yep. Now, if someone went down previously, then you can go ahead and touch the shrine and then come over here and fight. That way, in case you die, you don't have to run all the way back. It's a named enemy right here. So make sure you kill them. Pick up your loot. And there's a chest to the shrine on the right. Now this next group of enemies, you're going to pull all the way up to the, well, I guess the next group. The, I always tell the DPS right here, hey, kill the archer. All right. Now, if you pull to here, you can go ahead and kill him here. Man, we didn't kill the archer. So we're going to have to go back for that guy after all this is said and done. The hammer is really good to have at this part, by the way, after that first boss, or actually after the lost part where I leaped across, I never switched back to the hammer running this. I don't know why I wasn't thinking, I guess, but the hammer is really good to have for stuns and CC. A hammer with refreshing moves, sundering clear out, hated, is really bis for a tank. So try to keep an eye out for those. You can pick one up in Mutated Tempest called Willpower, and then you can upgrade it from there. DPS can take out that archer really quickly while the tank's building up aggro on these guys and holding them. Down below, you will see two mobs, a dog and a enemy. So the healer can pull those up while you're fighting these. If that happens, crossing this line right here will get the next part of the mission that you need to do. You see where it says solve ancient mechanism. So crossing that line is what you want to do there, but you do not want to go all the way down and start fighting the blunderbuss mob group. Okay. You go down there, you get the mission to go to solve the ancient mechanism. Earlier when we typed in the code for the dials, it's going to be the same code right here. So Someone three zero three D square you. D. Okay. So I uh, preset to three zero two. Okay, now. Now I told them to step on the dial. Once I hear that go, I flip it once and boom, that's it. You get rid of the ghost. If you were to fight that blunderbuss guy down there, and anybody steps on the dial down here before you did that, what we just did, then ghost will spawn and they don't stop spawning, and you're gonna get everybody wiped, and it just becomes a big problem. So learn it because that's the way you do in mutations tank will hold the blunderbuss guy while the other dps will take out the mobs so you see how he's backing up right here to the dial let's say someone walked up here and pressed on the dial like that right there now all the ghosts would be spawning and you would have ghosts all over the dang place <laughs> 
You don't want to do that. So, as someone who's played this game for a very long time, please follow that path that I showed you. Don't forget your last quest item here. And there's a chest. Now we're going to head to the final boss. You really always want to pull these mobs to the shrine if anybody went down in the meantime. That way you don't take a chance of them spawning way back at the last shrine and having to run all the way back. But no one died, so hey, we're just going to fight them here. Watch out for the lava. And you'll see the shrine down here to the left. Now, Tank, you could pull those mobs down and walk around to the stairs there, line aside them. Or you could just walk down here, skip those mobs, get the shrine, and go inside. And that way they don't follow you. Now, this boss does a lot of slash damage, okay? So, slash ward on the shield tanks. This is a lot of fire in this, so you want a full fire gem for this boss fight later on down the road. In a regular, eh, maybe it's not going to matter too much, but... It's all fire and slash. So he starts out with a little spinnaker doing slash damage with fire on the axe, which looks really cool, by the way. These little volcanoes will spawn. He will also spin and shoot fireballs at you. And then when you get him to the next phase, he will spawn a meatball that will land at these three area platform areas. And you'll have to dodge. And then the last phase, he spawns two meatballs that you will end up seeing. And he random range attacks to anybody range. So the healer, he'll usually turn and jump at the healer at some point. That's not tank losing aggro. That's just a random range attack. It's a mechanic. Right here, the healer will usually throw a sacred so you can fight in the fire. Get used to doing that because that's how it will be in mutations. That crosshair that you saw above my head is me having 10 stacks of fire. Once you build up 10 stacks of fire on you, there's a timer of 4 or 5 seconds. And at the end of that, you explode fire around you. That will hurt your teammates too. But, you know, not much you can do about it. There's a lot of fire in this, so everybody's going to have them at some point. There's not really a great spot to tank this guy, so just try to do your best. Usually I switch from platform to platform here at the very beginning where we came in and most tanks will do that so there's the first meatball hey you gotta dodge that attack a lot of times tanks that will break your stamina get out of that because that will right, uh, slow down that will knock you right there the those three base. strikes will knock you All right, he's about to spawn the second meatball. And now you have two. So you have those two meatballs. You have the fire from him spinning and shooting it at you. You got the volcanoes. There's no really, you know, there's not really a safe spot to stand. <laughs> oh, this fun boss fight's so much fun, let me tell you, especially when you get up to M3s. Now, if you're standing here, I was going to show you, you could dodge when that meatball is about to hit, if you can time it, and you'll be just fine. If you have a hatchet and you go berserk, that meatball will not knock you. You'll be just fine. So those are two things that you can learn to do. Me putting the boss here is putting the de uh, DPS in a bad spot because they're going to be right there on the meatball. And if they get slammed down on and hit while the ball's going forward, they're pretty much going to die out. So you kind of want to pull him toward the middle right there and pick a side to go to. And hopefully the DPS can find a spot to get in where they fit in. Now we're about to kill the boss and that will be the end of the dungeon. Slash amulet's really good to have on this boss if you're tank and if you're DPS. Because if you try to go behind him and hit him, he will backstab you. So some of those swings that he does with the axe will hit behind him. So put on a little bit extra con and good luck. And there we are. Don't forget your chest on the left on the way out. And don't forget to come over here and have a good view. Good sound and glacial tarn is on the other side as you can see when I get over there. So it's pretty cool. And we'll hit that dungeon up here very soon. Well, I hope you appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll have another video out soon. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I stream every day live on Twitch. 
and I'll see you all there. Later.